salads and stuff. And uh, we made this week, we made um, fresh homemade guacamole. You know, with fresh tomatoes in there and cilantro and stuff, fresh onion. And then we made some fresh salsa with, with fresh tomatoes, you know. Uh, fresh, you know, delicious, man. A hundred times better than the stuff you get in the store when you, you buy it, you know. It came out great, so you can eat that. Now, Vic just notified me just a minute ago that uh, the corn chips we were eating, we were not allowed to eat. But uh, the, I'm sure there's chips we can get there to replace those, Okay. So, also too, another thing we eat is a lot of black bean soup, okay, and pasta. You can have, uh, you can't have regular pasta with egg noodles, but they make these veggie pasta now that you can have, or you can make your own homemade pasta. You can make pasta out of zucchini and stuff, you know, if you really want to get fancy. So, I really would encourage people to join us in this. Even this time, you could start today and do it for 21 days. Me and Vic usually go beyond in 21 days. And Vic's vegan anyway, so she hardly notices. Uh, and except the sugar she misses and the bread. You can't have bread. Sorry, guys. But you can go to the, just Google Daniel Fast, and you'll see the, um, the different recipes they have. Now, what I'd like to do with the Daniel Fast, and by the way, it's a spiritual fast. You also be spending time praying and stuff like that. Uh, you can no matter what your faith is, you can, you know, whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. But one of the goals I have with this Daniel Fest is I, I'd like to get encourage people to join in, uh, and then you you write a little diary of what your experience was like. You know, a little, you know, 100 words, 200 words. It doesn't have to be a big deal. You take some pictures of yourself and you, you know, a couple of meals you cooked and a couple of recipes you took and maybe some kind of new exercises you did this week. Uh, me and Vic, we've been hiking every day, and I found a whole bunch of new hiking trails out here uh, that we've been exploring. Really cool ones that are like walking distance from our house here, uh, like really, really close, and really, really good. We we hiked one day eight miles, you know, uh, it took us like four hours. So, you know, if you're doing that, take a picture of yourself hiking and send it to me, and we'll include it in a book, okay? Now, you'll be in a book. You know, your name will be in a book, your picture will be in a book, and your recipe, your little writing will be your be a published author, okay? Uh, and uh, you'll be books will be available to you to sell to your friends, your neighbors, and your family and stuff like that. Uh, you'll make money selling a book, and I can also get you interviews. You can be interviewed on mainstream media. Now, also too, this would give me an opportunity with a, with a more mainstream book uh, to be interviewed on Christian stations. And mainstream media stations, fitness shows, self-help type shows. Again, bringing more audience into the Opperman Report than we sick him with our stuff about how Michael Jackson was a pedophile and uh, about the, the underwear bomber and all the stuff that we love to report on and all the corruption going on at the DNC. Okay? And this is how we lure them in. See, we lure them in and we get them. And we take them for everything they got. Okay. One more thing tonight going on is Reverend Pinkney. Reverend Pinkney... Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, I believe it has not been clarified to me 100%, but I believe he lost his appeal. Okay. And he's on a hunger strike again, and they're, they're trying right now to raise 500 bucks tonight. You know, and like I said, you know, if you, you got, you know, we listen to the show, you know, I know how many people listen to the show. We're on like 10 stations right now tonight live. And, um, on iTunes and iHeart during the Spreaker, Stritcher, all these things, you know. So I know a lot of people listen to the show. So the Reverend Pinkney, man, he's 67 years old. He's doing two to ten years. And uh, you need your support, okay? Because, like, right now you're sitting there in your comfortable chair drinking a cup of coffee or having a beer, whatever you're doing, um, and you're, you're lying back, you got your comfy pillow, and your blanket, you know, you could adjust the air conditioner on your wall, you could turn the lights on and off. Reverend Pinky cannot do any of those things, you know, right now. And he's an innocent man, 67 years old, facing two to ten, he's in doing two to ten years, just lost his appeal. So it should be out shortly, but uh, we want to raise 500 bucks tonight, bhbanco.org. If you just Google Reverend Ed Pinkney, bhbanco.org, it'll come right up. There's a uh, YouTube, uh, PayPal 
donation thing on there. Now you say, well, Ed, I don't got a lot of money. And two bucks, three bucks, you know. If, you know, someone this week sent me a dollar, you know. And it, when you get that dollar, it feels good to go to your email and see that dollar. So Reverend Pinkney's wife or who's ever running that, you know, if they just saw a dollar, if they saw two dollars, it, it's encouraging that there's a stranger out there. You don't recognize the name. Someone out there cares about me, you know. And it's really, really important. Okay, so, okay, anything else going on with this list here of notes? I, uh, oh, yeah, I got a couple of things here, yeah. I, I need you to pray for us along the lines of the, the Daniel Fast and praying for us. A uh, couple of things. One is a friend of mine, Joe, tonight went to the ER with chest pains. Okay, so pray for Joe. A uh, really cool guy, and he's helping with all the networks and stuff like that. He's a really, really cool guy. And he says he's had these chest pains. His, his ribs feel like they're broken every time he breathes. So we want to pray for him. Also, too, now I found this out last Saturday right before I did the show. I got a call from uh, a friend of mine's mother that her daughter's been missing since December. Okay, and that the car was parked out in front of this motel since, like, December. Um now, I thought this girl was mad at me, and that's why she wasn't getting back to me on Facebook. Because there was one point in time I was worried about her, because she was doing some uh, risky stuff, risky behavior. And I was concerned about her, and I says, I want you to check in with me every day. You guys have no idea what goes on around this place. <laughs> I don't know the, the cast of characters I got in my life. But this young woman, who I really did care about, and was a very, very nice person. Uh, and she's been on the show. I don't want to go into too much details, but she's actually been on the show. Um, is missing. She's been missing since uh, December. Mother hasn't heard from her. And so I, we just started trying to find her. So I'm asking everybody to please pray for her too as well. Too, that the, you, know, you can only imagine how terrifying it would be if one of your loved ones is missing for this amount of time and you haven't heard from her. So keep an eye on that situation there too as well. Please, thank you. Okay, let's see. Okay. Let's see here. Well, show's over. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see what's happening. 22 minutes. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Let's see. Okay. 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 Well. Just for men. Earlier this week, um, there's a certain person, and I, I'm I'm actually in the process of doing a favor for this person, okay, and helping them out with their life and their career, and uh, not whether they realize it or not, you know, the, that my efforts are going to benefit their life, and probably the most important area of their life that they, they, they live, that they see. Something they're, they're very uh, coveted, covetous of. Something that they're very proud of. Something they're very uh, uh, protective of. Area of their life. And I'm helping them in that area. Whether they know it or not. Okay. And by the way, too, I've done a lot of stuff. I don't want to get into it. Okay. But anyway. And so while I'm in the process of helping this person, This person does something out of his way to offend me and to insult me, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, you're like, and the, these little things, man, piss me off. You have no idea. I get so angry at the slightest little insult, the slightest little slight. Uh, the, I, the anger wells up in me that it, it will go on for days. You know, I'm over it today. I feel I'm in a good mood today. But I was so pissed off this week, you have no idea. About this one little comment from this person. You know? And, you know, and I can look beyond it and say, all right, good, look, you know, this guy is sabotaging himself. You know? He's got nothing going on. And, and with, this, with the stroke of my hand, I, I can make things great for him and help and rise him up or destroy him and take away the one thing that he loves the most. Right. Now, 
Now you can, you know, the Bible tells us, right? <laughs> you go to church, they say, forgive people. And I do forgive people. I really do. You know, I forgive people. You know, the crap I've been through in my life, I forgive people. But even though when you forgive someone, you can't overlook the fact that this person can be a threat whether they mean it or not, they're, they, they're sabotaging themselves, they're, they're reckless, they're, they're dangerous, and they can't be trusted. Okay? So you got to keep an eye on that guy. you got to keep an eye on him, and you got to watch him. You can forgive him. I can forgive. Okay? A lot of people don't even consider forgiving people. I know a lot of people don't consider forgiving. You know, that's not even a consideration in their life that they're going to forgive somebody. But I can forgive somebody. Okay? But you got to still keep an eye on them. And if they're, they're a, a danger a threat, or too much of a hassle. You just got to get rid of them. You know, what, what do you do? You can't keep somebody around. That That's a problem. You know? Let's take a commercial break here. Okay? And when we come back, we're going to be talking about Just for Men. Just for Men, the hair dye product. Okay? And how does that possibly apply to this story? Where is it going? Okay? Is he just rambling like a lunatic because he has no sugar and no beer in his, in his body? <laughs> huh? Does that need an intravenous uh, application of vodka to get him through the show? Possibly. Possibly. We don't know. Okay, I'm going to play a little uh, commercial break here, and then we'll be back. Okay, where's my ads? Did I delete those ads? I always got to be careful what I say, too, because I know that uh, Sean Duff is out there taping me. I'm going to make some goofy uh, <laughs> goofy uh, video with little clips of crazy things I'm saying. Okay, we'll be right back after these messages. And now a word from our sponsors. Did you know that 30% of all people on online dating websites and personal ads are either married or in a monogamous relationship. 30%. If you suspect that your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend may be cheating online, go to emailrevealer.com uh, on our online infidelity investigation. You give us their email address and we can trace it back to online personal ads, dating sites, and social networks. We can even expand the investigation and find them uh, cheating on uh, escort service sites uh, or even porn sites if they're registered to porn sites and swinger sites. Uh, so check out emailrevealer.com if you suspect your spouse is cheating and check out our online infidelity investigation. William Ramsey is a producer here at the Opperman Report. And he's just come out with a new book, Children of the Beast, Alistair Crowley's Shadow Over Humanity. Now, he just sent me a copy of this book. Oh, boy, it's about two inches thick. And there's a chapter on just about everybody in this book uh, that you can imagine, uh, the Beatles. And, uh, <laughs> uh, Jack Parsons. Uh, everybody's in here. It's incredible. Uh, and I definitely recommend this book. There's a, a, a bunch of pictures in here, too, uh, of all these people in uh, different chapters and, and uh, information. Uh, Anton LaVey and people I've never heard of, too. There's a whole bunch in here. JC, JFC Fuller. I don't know who he is. Uh, but, but it's great stuff uh, by our, ho our, our producer here, uh, William Ramsey. So check out Children of the Beast, Alistair Crowley's Shadow Over Humanity. Uh, you can find it on Amazon.com. Or you could find it in the Opperman Report uh, dot com bookstore. We have an urgent bulletin. Uh, it seems that the group Straw Man is still on the loose. It has been confirmed that Straw Man are, are Canadian, okay, and that uh, authorities are asking people to stay indoors. Lock your doors and windows until this group can be dealt with. You could find more information about this group.